is more than a streaming service, and it's also less than a streaming service, because we're not a streaming service. <laughs> or are we? Yes, we aren't. Binge Pipe offers a new service where we explain to your mom what happened. Binge Pipe is proud to resurrect from the dead. You don't know, Jack. Binge Pipe, what even is TV anymore? I'm Cookie Masterson, and if being lonely is a sin, uh, well, then I'm going to hell. You? Two players means we'll have twice as much fun as long as one of you doesn't suck. And so it begins. Time for question one. To get things started, metal heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. If Metallica recorded a song about the most abundant metallic element in the human body, what would it be called? Enter Sodium, Master of Potassium, the Magnesium Remains, or the Calcium of Cthulhu. Okay, who chose what? Yeah, way to be wrong. <laughs> Bam! I mean, splat. It was this one all along. Calcium is the most abundant metallic element in the human body, most of it found in bones and teeth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Coming up, I suspect foul play. I've started getting into that show Riverdale, or as I like to call it, Steamy Archie. For our older players, yes, it's a teen drama based on the Archie comics, and no, I'm not making that up. Imagine a shocking episode of Riverdale that reveals Jason Blossom's murderer to be an Ithia Americana Mallard. This means the culprit was a redhead, a blonde, a brunette, or a jughead. Who picked what? This was a tough choice. Now you know how Archie feels. <laughs> Ithia Americana is a species of duck named the Redhead. It's known for its, uh, wait for it, bright red head. I know, right? Yeah. I should check Urban Dictionary to make sure steamy Archie doesn't already mean something. Uh, no, forget it. I, I'm probably better off not knowing. Oh, here's a good one. Think in bio. And I'm tagging you because it's time for a dis or dat. Dis or dat. I'm gonna read seven names, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a dog on Instagram that has over 100,000 followers, or a Nobel Prize winner in physics. Don't think too hard. I'm only giving you a few seconds to decide between an Instagram dog or a Nobel Laureate. And you're both doing this together, so look alive. Ready? Good. Aloysius Van Winkle. Digby Van Winkle. Neville Francis Mott. Neville Jacobs. Maddie Humphrey. Carp Kush. Wolfgang Pauli. Hey, let's hear it for lucky guesses. But player one, you really whizzed that dis or dat down your leg. Actions have been taken to ensure you have a better playing experience. Looks like it's screw time. That is the truth, Cookie. Using the screw makes it harder for your opponent to answer in a variety of pleasurable ways. And you'll receive a bonus if they choose incorrectly. <coughs> Great, thanks. Binge Pipe, your loyal friend that's also a company. I don't need you anymore. Here's one I like to call 
really light beer. Which of these intimidatingly hip beverages is the smallest batch beer? A microbrew, a millibrew, a pico brew, or a centibrew? Brace yourself. You got the pointy end of the screw player, too. Let's get this question trending. What'd you guys pick? You blew it. A pico denotes one trillionth, the smallest unit listed here. And so that's probably good, right? I don't know. Can I just get a club soda? Way to screw player one. Have some cash. Coming up next, type equals squiggly bracket fashion comma famous squiggly bracket. Except all cookies don't clear your cash. It's time for data mining. Binge Pipe has collected so much user data, it needs help locating some of its favorites. We have no favorites. We love all of your personal information equally. Like this. What dress is good for every occasion? The number five trademarkable? Does boy bag have a double meaning? Whose search history have we acquired? Alexander McQueen, Coco Chanel, Gianni Versace, or Vera Wang? So who got it? There's no easy way to put this. Coco Chanel popularized the little black dress, introduced the fragrance Chanel No. 5, and named a handbag after her lover, Arthur Boy Capel. Thank you for your help. Your willingness to assist us has been noted and will be exploited in the future. Round 1 is history. Let's look at the scores I'll be sending to your parents. Currently, Player 2 is in the lead. Player one, on the other hand, maybe you should try winning. When the going gets tough, the tough gets another screw. And remember, round two screws are more powerful, and they'll net you more cash for each player that gets the question wrong. So don't forget to use that thing. Player two, I'd answer fast if I were you, unless you're looking to get screwed. Oh, and did I mention all the money's doubled in round two? It's like the first round didn't even matter. <laughs> Six trombones is not a parade! And now, it's 2018 and I'm still writing tired jokes on my checks. I love sending money with Venmo because the descriptions my friends put in their transactions are always, always so funny. If the United States purchase of the Virgin Islands was recorded in Venmo, what hilarious description would you see? The U.S. paid Spain for hot sex, the U.S. paid France for erotic dance, the U.S. paid England for porn shoot, or the U.S. paid Denmark for butt stuff. Hope you like what you picked. Anybody got change for a wrong answer? I really wanted you to pick this one. In 1917, the U.S. bought the Virgin Islands from the Danes for a cool 25 million. But really, it should have been 25 million and four dollars, because the U.S. said it didn't want any of the fries Denmark ordered, but then when they came, they went to town on them. Mon père a rétréci. Sept. It's time for Singles Night at the Watering Hole. Picture it, a suitor with an impressive neck beard decides to go full alpha and approach the fastest mammal at the bar. He tips his fedora and says, M'lady, M'lion, M'lama, or M'leopard seal. Let's see how that shook out. Alpaca it in and go home. Lions have been clocked running 50 miles per hour in short sprints. Sorry animals, it's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't graze here. Hey, question. We'd like to initiate a moment of playful interactivity. Would you like a question where the answer rhymes with orange, or a question where the answer rhymes with purple? Contribute your percentage of the choice, now. Here are the votes. 
And now, we'll fulfill our promise and deliver your content. Twas then I learned to heed the winds of it. Try this on for size. A question where the answer rhymes with purple. So I've been texting with this girl from Scotland, and it's great because, I mean, seriously, we're never going to meet. So I don't have to worry about doing something stupid, like telling my go-to first date story about the time I got kicked in the butt so hard I limped for a week. <laughs> it's a great story, actually. You know what? I'm going to tell this girl from Scotland about the time I got kicked in the butt so hard I limped for a week. If I want to pepper in some old-timey Scottish slang, how should I tell the story? I got kicked in the devil and I started to... Oh, look out. You got hit by a screw player, too. Good luck following the bouncing answer. Okay, who chose what? You got it! <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, you're thinking of the time I sustained massive head trauma. Here's what you meant to pick. While both words are severely outdated, kerple means butt and herple means to hobble or limp. And to the great people of Scotland, my sincerest apologies. That screw is a good move, player one. I believe this belongs to you. Up next, dead men seem to keep telling tales. The power of film to depict the majesty of the human condition or move us to laughter and tears really is remarkable. Anyway, what happened in Pirates of the Caribbean 5? Something with the Fountain of Youth? Something with a trident? Something with Atlantis? Or something with an undead shark? And how do we do? Uh, maybe? <laughs> In Pirates of the Caribbean 5, everyone is after the trident of Poseidon or something, maybe. I heard Pirate 6 is a search for what's left of Johnny Depp's career. This one's called A Really Important Letter. Which of these movie titles would best fit in the heading of a business letter? Dear White People, P.S. I Love You, 10 Cloverfield Lane, or Love, Simon? Okay, what'd you pick? The heading of a business letter includes the name and address of the sender. Dear potential monsters in and outside this bunker, I hope this letter finds you well. You made it to the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap it on your device. The faster you pick a right answer, the more cash you make. And more than one answer can be right. But each time you're wrong, I'm taking some cash away. And be careful. We may listen to you. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Let's hang out. Hopefully you know who hangs out at these famous bars and restaurants.
wins. Nicely done, Player One. You were averagely better than your competition. So even though you're a winner, you don't know Jack. Hey, I'm Austin Creed. You might know me from my career as a sports entertainer, or from my highly successful YouTube channel, Up Up Down Down. But from now on, you're only going to know me from Binge Pipe. That's right. I just signed an exclusive multi-decade deal with Binge Pipe. Uh, apparently, I don't really remember signing it, but they have all the paperwork, so I guess I did. I'll be hosting hours and hours of binge pipe programming right from this tiny locked room in binge pipe headquarters. And I'll be wrestling for the binge pipe wrestling league, which they assure me is a real thing. I'm already so busy producing great binge pipe content, I couldn't go home if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, so look for me, Austin Creed, right here on binge pipe. And please tell my family that I love them. Ring, 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 ring. Hi, it's me, Evan Jacover. You might remember me from Evan Jacover.